All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. I hope you're doing great. Um, all right. So here's what we're going to be working on over the next couple of minutes. We want to make sure that we can multiply a monomial and a polynomial. Okay. And, and, and so as we think about this, what is a monomial? Mono meaning one. Mono e mono. Hey, you want me? I'll take you on. Mono e mono. No, just kidding. Anyways, uh, mono means one. Okay. Poly means more than one. Okay. And so we're going to be multiplying single terms with maybe single terms, and then single terms with maybe more than one term, and then maybe even multiplying more than one term with more than one term. And, and so I'll kind of explain that more as we get going here. So the big thing that I want to make sure you remember is the distributive property. Okay? Most of you guys do an excellent job with the distributive property, and so I want to make sure that we're going to continue to reinforce that property today as we work through these. And so as we look at uh, number one here, uh, I want to be able to go ahead and multiply 5x through the parentheses. I want to distribute that 5x through the parentheses. And so we, we have to remember our rules of exponents. Remember when multiplying exponents, we have, to rate, we have to add their exponents. So if I put down that this is 5x to the first, and this is 5x to the first, okay, Multiplying them together, 5 times 1 gives me 5. x times x would be x to the second. Okay? And then if I take 5x times 6, that would be 5 times 6 is 30. x times nothing would just be x. And again, we want to write that in standard form, so I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay? So again, I'm, I'm distributing that through the parentheses there. Okay? All right, now... Um, as we get going here, you guys are probably going to pick up on this and maybe even be able to do this faster than what I can communicate it to you. So feel free to move uh, a little bit at a little bit quicker pace and then come back and double check your work as I, as I talk you through it. So um, for the next one, uh, again, I want to distribute this monomial into the parentheses where we have a polynomial. There's more than one term there. And so the first thing I want to do is multiply the coefficient here with the coefficient there. That gives me negative 8 x times x to the second gives me x to the third. Remember, there's a, a 1 right there. Okay. For some of you, it might be beneficial to go ahead and put an x to the first or you know, that 1 down so that you know it's there. Uh, negative 4 times positive 5 will give me negative 20. x to the first times x to the first is x to the second. And then we have negative 12 times negative 4, which is going to be negative 48. And then it's just x times nothing, which is just x. And that right there um, is the product of the monomial and polynomial right there. Okay. Now, I, I'd encourage you to pause your computer for number three. I'm going to work on it here in just a second. But after seeing those first two, you should be able to do number three on your own. Okay. So take a moment and go ahead and do that for me. All right. So hopefully you pause your computer and you work through it. Um, don't be a cheater, okay? Be honest with yourself. Hopefully you're picking this up right now. But on all of your papers there, I'd, I'd hope to see the rainbow right there that tells me you're distributing the parentheses, okay? So if I do this, a negative 1 times a positive 1 gives me a negative 1, y to the 6, okay? 1 plus 5 is 6 there. Uh, now, if you didn't want to put the, the 1 down, you just put negative y to the 6, that's the exact same thing, okay? A negative, y, a negative 1 times a positive 4 is a negative 4. y to the third. Again, 1 plus 2 is 3. That's how I get the third. And then a negative times a negative is a positive. 8y. Okay, or you can put y to the first there, but that would be the product there. Okay? All right, so hopefully you all got that right. Now, what I would do is these next uh, 6 aren't really much different. Okay, so again, I would pause your computer and see if you can start to work through these and then come back and double check it with me. Okay, so take a moment and go and do that. All right, so hopefully you were able to get through those, those uh, six problems there. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how you did. Again, we're distributing here. 
a negative 2b times b squared would be 2b to the third. Remember, there's a 1 right there. Okay. And then uh, 2 times 12 is going to give me 24 b to the first power. There's, there's no uh, b to the second power. If you want to put b to the first, you can do that. It does not matter to me. Okay. Uh, number 5, if I distribute this through the parentheses here, 2 times 3 is 6. z to the first times z to the second would be z to the third plus 2 times 1. Remember, there's a 1 right there. If you need to put that down, you can would be 2. z to the first times z to the first would be z to the second. Okay. And then we have 2 times negative 8, which would be negative 16. z is by itself. Negative 16z right there. Okay. Um, for number 6, here's what we have. Negative x times 3x squared. So we be negative 3x to the third. Okay, again, there's an x right there. All right. Uh, negative times a negative is a positive. Please tell me you didn't get that wrong. Okay, we've worked on that. Sometimes you get going too fast. Don't do that, folks. Okay, negative times a negative is a positive. x times x, or x to the first times x to the first would be x squared. And then negative times a negative is, again, a positive. Uh, there's a 1 right here. Don't forget that. Times 6 is just 6. x times nothing is just x. Okay. Man, I hope you guys ace that part. Okay, not very hard there. If I do this one, same thing all over again. Some of you may help to put a 1 here. Some of you may help to put a 1 there. But a 1 times a 1 gives you 1. y to the first times y to the second gives you y to the third. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. y to the first times y is y to the second. Ooh, I about made a slip up there. Got to be careful, okay? 1 plus 1 is 2, okay? And then 1 times 4 is 4, and then just y carries along at the end, okay? Now, these next two are the ones that would concern me the most in this section, and I bet you can figure out why. Uh, in number 8, we've got an s to the third here. Now, we're multiplying with everything. I hope that doesn't throw you off. And number nine is that doggone fraction, two-thirds. Okay, you got to be careful with those fractions there. So looking at, erase that first. Looking at number eight, five times one is five. S to the third times S to the second is going to be S to the fifth. Okay, five times negative ten is negative fifty. S to the third times S to the first is S to the fourth. And then five times twelve is sixty. S to the third, doesn't have anything else to multiply with, all by his lonesome, S to the third, okay? All right, uh, looking at number nine, um, if I take three times two-thirds, what's two-thirds of three? It's just two. Y of the second times Y of the first gives me Y of the third, hopefully you got that, plus, okay, now, one-sixth of three, I, I know a lot of you probably can do that in your calculator real simple. Let me just show you the math here behind this. If I take three over one, and I'm taking one-sixth of that, remember, of is multiplication, what we're left with is three times one and one times six, one-half. Okay, so 0.5, one-half, doesn't matter to me how you put it down. Yeah, I always like to see the fractions. And then y to the second, again, stays by as lonesome as we come along, okay? So hopefully that was, that was understandable, that first section there. Now we're gonna move into some story problems here. Ah, I can feel your head just pounding story problems. Are you kidding me? With this stuff, what are we gonna do? Well, let's make, let's make the complex simple. Remember, that's the whole goal when looking at, at story problems here. A photograph of the Grand Canyon, which by the way, I've never been to. I'd like to someday, but I've never been to the Grand Canyon, so. If you have, tell me about it. I'd love to hear your story. Um, was 12 inches by 8 inches wide. Okay, 12 inches long by 8 inches wide. I'm just going to go ahead and rough sketch this picture here. 8 inches wide, 12 inches long. Okay. After Michelle trimmed one side of the photograph, its width was 8 minus t. What is the expression for the area of the trimmed photograph? Okay. So basically, 
we don't know how much she took off, but there was this length of T that she took off here. Okay, this portion from here to here, she took off. So what was left over, when we take something away, we, we use subtraction. So this, this length is 8 minus T. And what we want to know is how do we identify what this area would be right here? Okay? Well, you know the area of a rectangle is base times height. So if I take my base and multiply it by my height, that would be an expression that would allow me to find the area that's left over of the rectangle. Well, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Looks like a lot of stuff we were just working on. So, if we go ahead and do this, distribute that, 8 times 12 is 96, minus 12t. That would be the expression uh, in square inches there. Now, you may be asking yourself, why did you put the parentheses around the 96 minus 12t? The reason is, is because both of these terms here are in square inches, okay? It's not just the, the 12t that's in square inches. So um, because we can't combine them, they're not like terms, we leave them separate, and we just put them in parentheses there, okay? All right, so I hope that was, that was easy enough to understand, okay? Let's take a look at, I believe we've got some more here. Let's see what we have on the back side, okay? Ooh, picture time. Love pictures, geometry. These last two problems deal a lot with geometry. So uh, you will see stuff like this later on. Determine the area of the shaded region. Okay? I'm going to do something really cool here. What's the area of a triangle? What's the formula for the area of a triangle? Okay? Well, I hope that you're remembering area of a triangle. The formula is one-half base times height. Now, a lot of you would like to do, say this, base times height divided by 2. Guess what? These are the same equations, okay? Uh, personal preference, I just like this one to use this one. It doesn't matter to me which one you use. It all means the same thing, okay? Now, the question is, we know what the base length already is. If I write this down, area of a triangle, 1 half. The base length we know is 3x plus 2. The question is, what is the height? Now remember, I don't know if you've covered this in other math classes, the height of, that's the cool part, I can use white. <laughs> the, the, this length right here is the height, which has to be perpendicular to the base. Okay, that is one fundamental key that we talk about a lot in, in geometry. The height of a triangle comes from a vertex and is perpendicular to the opposite side. What does perpendicular mean? It means that the height and the base intersect to form a right angle, okay? If you look at your ceiling tiles, the lines with the ones that go one way in the room versus another way in the room, they intersect to form right angles. And so, yeah, they're going to be perpendicular to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and put down here that this height is x squared. And so I'm going to plug that into my equation over here. And the question is, can you simplify that to figure out an expression of what the area is going to be of the triangle, okay? Um, and so I, I would hope that you would, you would do one of two things here. You've got this 1 half that needs distributed in the parentheses, and you've got this x squared that needs distributed in the parentheses, okay? Um, and you can even move this around. You can move this to the front, okay? So maybe that would be the easiest way. I don't know if I've ever taught it this way. You can move that around and get this. I'll do that. There you go. This right here. Okay, because multiplication is commutative. You can switch it around. 3 times 2 is the same thing as 2 times 3. And, or if you want three expressions, because we do have 3 up here, if I was to do 2 times 3 times 4, is that the same thing as 2 times 4 times 3? Uh, yep. Okay, both are 24. Okay. So as a result, I can move this around. Now I can just distribute one time and I'm done. So what's half of 3? 1.5. x squared times x. That's x to the third. What's half of 2? That's 1. Uh, x squared stays by its lonesome. And that's the expression for the area of that black triangle up there. Okay? I hope, I really hope that uh, everything I explained so far is understandable. If you have questions, come back to me, talk to me, and we'll try to figure some things out. Um, 
let me scroll down here just to make sure. I, I'm pretty sure that was the last problem I had there. All right, very good. Uh, I believe that you need to show your notes to the teacher to make sure you get credit for that. And then, uh, yeah, come and talk to me. And, and um, there's some problems on the, the website, my calendar, that I'd like you to get, go ahead and do as well. So have a great night, guys, and I will see you uh, the next time I see you. Goodbye.